Sarah, thank you so much for the opportunity to chat with you. Um, this is wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, you Can Live Forever is a wonderful film. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful story, but it's also very challenging at the same time. I was wondering uh, for you both, uh, where did the story idea come from? Um, it was, it's inspired by just my, the fact that I grew up in the Jehovah's Witness community and until I was a, in my early teens and that I'm a lesbian. So we took those two ideas and we combined them over the course of 10 years to come up with this story. Um, it's a powerful, uh, powerful story. I appreciate, I appreciate it for sure. Um, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about about the community itself and and the relationships going mm -hmm. on because one of the things I think is so fascinating about this conversation about this film is the the constant conversations of and forgive my air quotes when I say this the truth and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering um, what type of response what you know with having grown up in the community you know what that word means. And do you think the truth can be owned by someone or, or a people group? Um, well, it is how they refer to it within their community as the religion. So in, in every way that they talk about it, that's how they refer to it, um, which was, you know, a choice to put that into the film because we don't really explain it. Um, but it's such a part of their lexicon that we really felt it was important to, to speak the way that they speak. Um, or at least how they spoke 30 years ago, which is when I was involved. Mm. And yeah, I mean, I think I think every religion would probably call themselves the truth, but the, the Jehovah's Witnesses have really made it their their <laughs> brand for sure. <laughs> it, it's uh, oh yeah, it, it's just it's so fascinating to me because these are these are just the terms that are it's yeah. a term that's consistently used. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I will say that, uh, you know, I, I really was fascinated by all of the specific terminology that Sarah would sort of like bring up that that the Jehovah's Witness community used. And I really found the truth to be really fascinating as a concept and really wanted to include it as, as part of the dialogue, because uh, when they say it, it, it sort of says so much. And I, I agree with Sarah that like probably uh, it is the defining aspect of any religion to believe that they have the access to an unvarnished truth. Um, and I just think it's, you know, was really um, material to the story that we were telling this idea that you could live in the truth or outside of it. And that the definition of truth would be really different depending on whose perspective you were seeing it from. Yeah. I like that you talk about live in the truth or live outside of it. Because that yeah. seems there there is a dividing line here uh, mm. in this particular in this particular story. Um, with that having been said, with that having been said, there is a conversation too that talks about uh, overcoming cruelty with grace and hatred with love. Yeah. Um, I, do you think that there there's a breakdown between faith and love in this community? I mean, like, is there? I mean, we, we have these conversations, we see love uh, between uh, between our two leads, mm -hmm. and and yet the characters who generally seem to love each other, there's, you know, um, but yeah. do you think there's a breakdown between faith and love here? Well, I think it's particularly with with queer relationships, there is the breakdown. It's the, the whole idea of um, unconditional love sort of goes out the window a little bit because there are conditions and I don't think that they withhold love but they there is the whole love the sinner hate the sin that is 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 pretty consistent across the Christian religions and yeah I think you know that that particular line is said during a, a dinner prayer when the two girls actually like blank out the sound of it and just connect with each other silently which was a choice as well that we made to to sort of shut out that world around them yeah there's a there's some beautiful uh connection that's going on in that moment mm -hmm. um that you but you can sense the struggle the sense the struggle yeah. for and, and i forget i'm sorry the, the 
Marika in within Marika. That's the name I yeah. can't remember. Um, who certainly is committed in her belief, mm -hmm. um, but broken, somewhat broken or torn. In yeah, some... she's she was the really the most challenging character to get right in the writing process, and was it, you know we had to really get it right in the casting process because she's a walking contradiction in many ways. Um, whereas Jamie's so much more straightforward in what she believes and feels and acts on. So yeah, the two characters are very, very different from one another, but for some reason make sense together. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they really do. Um, I was wondering about the idea of joy. Mm. This was something else that came up and there's a wonderful uh, conversation with Marika's sister and she talks about uh, how she gets a lot of joy from it, the yeah. experience. But the, within that, within within the scenes we see, I, I'm just wondering, you know, even from your experience, Sarah, um, what does joy look like, uh, and and can that be experienced from somebody as 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 Mark said that is on the outside? <laughs> the character you mean like yeah the, the character. character well the character yeah, the she, she, she says it very very stoically it's funny it's oh, like yeah, that I was... get a lot of joy from this and <laughs> I, I mean really... we we had Derek Campbell who's such a wonderful actor and you know she says she delivers that line so joylessly which we found a little funny and almost ominous when she was doing it um but there's so much joy in the movie. Like there's such moments of pure joy and freedom. Um, I think we captured that, Mark. You agree? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say what, you know, uh, you know, so many religions sort of um, have at their center a promise of, you know, ecstasy or redemption or joy. Uh, and yet when you look at it from the outside, it seems harder to find. <laughs> um so we wanted to have that perspective um even though you know you may not feel aligned with it yourself as a viewer uh we thought it was important to understand how the people in this community spoke to each other and how they made sense of their lives to themselves and not just have an outside perspective mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, and having said that, and I will say this, there is a certain affection for the Jehovah's Witness community in this, in this film. There, this is not uh, tearing, the sh tearing them to shreds type of story. It's, it's simply not. It's, there's yeah. a very loving, uh, loving look at it, even in the midst of the challenges that are going on between, between the, two, the two girls. Yeah, we never wanted to make the religion the bad guy. It was too obvious a path to take, and it was way more nuanced and interesting to sort of be fair about it, which I think we succeeded at. Yeah, I mean, the Jehovah's Witness community itself is is not, um, it, it, it is a minority and often through history, very persecuted minority. So we didn't feel like it was right to treat them as if they were a very powerful state-backed church. Uh, you know, that there's a very different power relationship going on with them. They themselves are, um, you know, like I said, have been persecuted quite a bit. Um, so it seemed like a, like a better choice and a more interesting choice to try and lean into their, to, to understanding them and their perspective rather than just seeing them as antagonists. Mm -hmm. As harmful as we, you know, think those beliefs could be, um, we have to understand the real people who are, um who are passing them on and 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 perpetuating uh harm uh, but it's real people who think they're doing the right thing um yeah i i, I get that i like that the word you're using there is antagonist because that's i think that the the challenge here is to not make them villains yeah mm -hmm. um and and i i think that that was handled very very well um, yeah. in this particular film but there is certain certainly that tension um, mm -hmm. of what's the belief it's sort of the the intense belief without logic that is the villain you know it's it's marika in the end who makes the decisions she makes based on her upbringing based on indoctrination from from her birth yeah, yeah everything she does is really her her own choice 
And that's what's like particularly heartbreaking about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the and and there is like I said, there's a warmth to this film uh, that I think really flows beautifully across the board. Like I said, um, not just in the relationship, but there, but in the family, even in the midst of those tensions. So I, I guess the question I would I would have for you both. Uh, is what is it that you hope people take away from from the film? Mark? Uh, you know, I hope they they go away with a the understanding of the journeys of both the leads. You know, both the outsider who comes to a, a place and is surprised by the the love that she finds, and the person who has her own worldview a little disrupted. Um, I think that, you know, I think if people walk away with that and with the sense of the, the joy of young love um, that we that we try to create. And I think a lot of, like you say, the affection comes from a set that we felt, you know, we had a really wonderful crew and really wonderful performers. And I think that shows in the in the film. I think if people walk away with it, sort of that, that sense of that feeling with a little bit of heartbreak, but a little bit of joy, I think we'll be happy. Yeah, and we left the ending open very much on purpose so that, people could sort of write their own, write the ending for them, whatever ending they think they should have. Well, I, I wondered that. I mean, I, I wasn't sure whether that we can expect you can still live forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get asked that a lot. If there's yeah. a secret, people are crazy about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think one of the first decisions we made was to end on a note that uh, was neither a unambiguously happy or unhappy ending, but that the story would sort of, you know, keep moving even after the credits rolled. And we wanted people to, to, to discuss it and argue it and, and you know, have their own sort of headcanon of what happened next. Yeah. And, you know, um, the feedback, feedback we've gotten include like from, from young queer people, especially who watched it is like, mostly people think it's a realistic ending, yeah. which is pretty much bang on what we wanted to accomplish. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful film and mm -hmm. I really appreciate the chance to speak with you both. Thank you so much, Mark, Sarah. I really- Thanks uh, for your great questions. Yeah, those are really good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, it means a lot. Uh, I wish you the best. I wish you the best Thank of you. success with the film. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.